What's going on guys? It's Nick here, back with another video. It's Pro Bowl weekend, which we are obviously not going to talk about for fantasy purposes. So I thought it would be fun to do a draft with actual people right now. There are no real lobbies available, so we did a $3 underdog draft. And just to kind of see what ADPs look like right now. Obviously, these are going to be much different than they are come honestly even like june but definitely into you know late august and early september figured it would just be fun to take a look see what things are looking at right now so we're going to go over this draft uh go over some of like the trends that i kind of saw um not only with like specific players but just like positionally how things may be changing a little bit this season but first i'll bring this over here i just wanted to look at um what you could do if you wanted to play an underdog draft for the Super Bowl. We're going to do this for like a few minutes. I'm just showing you um, what's available. It's only obviously a one game slate. So it's much different than normal. Normally you're drafting, I mean, in, in season long, you're drafting an 18 team, um, 18 round team, 18 player team for like other drafts it might be 10. It's only four. So if you want to take a shot at something for the Super Bowl, um, it's going to be like the big game contest, basically. You're drafting four players. My only note on this, and then we'll go over the, the other draft, is just make sure your lineup makes sense. Don't just draft four random players, try and hit on like the highest scores. Make it make sense. I only did one draft for this just to kind of show you all. I don't think I'm going to do too many, but the concept is just make your lineup tell a story. I drafted Mahomes in the first round. I'll show you. Um, This is the only way that I can really show it. This is like the ADP. This is in general where things are going. I had second overall pick, took Mahomes, uh, Hurts and Mahomes will obviously go one and two because I didn't draft Jalen Hurts. The thought process is, well, the Eagles are going to score points, right? They're obviously going to score touchdowns. Why don't I draft Miles Sanders? Hope that the touchdowns come on the ground um, like they did last week. That means Hurts ends up with not a great score. A.J. Brown, Devonta Smith have a lower chance of hitting for a good score. And so you start off with that. Then you say, okay, well, if Mahomes is one of the higher scores, maybe we should stack him up. And so I just take McKinnon. He could score on the ground, could score through the air. That'll help. If he's having a good game, it's probably through the air. He's probably not running for, you know, 100, 120 yards. And then you just add on someone else. I added Tony, uh, but it really could just be the wide receiver of your choice. I mean, at that point, there were really no other options. I was glad I got Tony. But yeah, that's really all you're doing for these drafts. Tell a story. Be fine taking someone that, you know, might be off the wall because it's four players, right? You have to draft a pretty unique team to win a massive contest with like a, what, 50K to first place prize. If you're drafting four players, like a ton of people are going to have overlap. If you want to try and win that solo, you're going to have to do some off the wall plays. Or, I mean, I think this is a really good lineup. Um, but if you, you can't get a really good lineup that you like, take someone random, hope they hit for a long touchdown. So that's what you can do this week. Um, this is not a tournament. Um, you can't send out private links to do tournaments. That's obviously cheating. Um, I sent this out on Twitter, on the Discord. So these are people who are active right now, kind of know what they're doing. This isn't some like random computer simulated lobby. Um, it's really the only option you have right now. One thing I'll say is there's no rookies. And so people are kind of asking um, during the draft, honestly, where they thought those rookies would end up going. I looked on like um, FFPC, I think NFC, and then one other one. I can't remember what the name was. Uh, but sites they're drafting right now that are including rookies. And this on the right is what I've seen. Um, there is like some other rookies that sometimes bounce in. And, but we're like not playing with a super large sample size right now. Uh, the main thing is Robinson, obviously going to be the first running back in fantasy, going to be the first running back in like the NFL draft and fantasy drafts both. Um, he's consistently going late first round into early second round. And I expect that to hold. I don't expect him unless he gets like the dream landing spot. He's not going to go in like the middle of the first round. I think that's very reserved for McCaffrey, Eckler, Jonathan Taylor. Um, Brees Hall will depend on his recovery, kind of how that happens. But I just don't see Robinson shooting up into this range. I think it's going to be that like 8 through 17. Basically where I picked right here, 8 and 17 is what I had. I went Kelsey and Saquon. In this general range right here, that's where he'll go. Um, then we'll have a drop-off. 
Um, there's not going to be another one probably until Gibbs. He's going around the, I would say, late third to like full fourth round. That's in general where he's going. Um, I don't know exactly where Brees Hall went this past year, but that seems a bit accurate. Depends on the site, you know, and the format. But that's what I, I would say. Like he's kind of like this year's Brees Hall. Not doing like a talent evaluation there, but like just saying for like drafting in fantasy, they'll probably go in pretty similar spots. But hey, it depends what team drafts Gibbs. Uh, and then you're looking at a trio of wide receivers: um, Jackson Smith in, in Jigba. I can never say his name. Um, he had a lot of variants, and it's really just going to come down to to draft capital with him, uh, Johnston, um, Jordan Addison, like, and other ones. Like, where do they go as far as like how early do they go in the draft? Um, what teams they get drafted to? So don't look too much at these three because there's a lot of variants there. Um, I'll just say that's the general range where, um, just like insert rookie wide receiver, relatively high draft capital on a good landing spot, they're going to go in this general, you know, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth round range. This chunk right here is kind of where uh, they're going to end up going. Probably behind, you know, this like core right here. Like we know Christian Watson has upside. Um, depends on who his quarterback ends up being. But we know like McLaurin, Keenan Allen, Godwin, uh, Mike Williams, Drake London, Judy, like those are the receivers going that range. I think, yeah, right behind them, once we get into a little bit more of unknowns, that's where these rookies are going to kind of start jumping in. So just to, to kind of shout out where they would have ended up going this draft, it wouldn't change all that much because if we're only looking at like, what, five to seven rookies starting off here, it's basically in round eight, if you move everyone back like half a round, maybe when we get into round 12, move everyone back like a full round. Um, and then it's also going to depend on where do people go in free agency, all those sorts of things. But figured I would shout that out uh, and then we can get rid of this now and we will go over uh, the draft. So we can go over my team. Um, well, we'll go over my team now and then we'll do, no, we'll do trends first. I overrule myself. Uh, we'll do my team after that. Biggest trend, pretty clear to everyone who is drafting, everyone who should be watching right now. Um, and if you're listening, I'll make sure to, listening on like Spotify or something, I'll make sure to, to shout them out verbally. Quarterback. I mean, I looked up where um, Josh Allen went last year, but even based off of memory, it was mid-third, right? Like you kind of rolled into this like 28, 31 range. A lot of times he would go there. Um, sometimes he would end up going where Lamar Jackson went in this draft, which is like the late third round into the turn of the fourth round. I've definitely seen drafts where he went in the fourth round, but oh my goodness. I mean, Jalen Hurts goes 19th. We have three quarterbacks go in the second round. Jalen Hurts, Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes. We have three more quarterbacks go in the third round. Justin Fields, Joe Burrow, and Lamar Jackson. And so we've got six quarterbacks coming off the board in a range where only one quarterback did last season. I looked up um, where that like next kind of, you know, trio of quarterbacks went. It was at like fourth, fifth round. So like starting like the mid fourth into the fifth round, that's where this next range of quarterbacks were going last season. Now they're all going in like the second and third round. It's a little bit too early. I don't think anyone's going to really fight me on that one. I would say like, when you look at this, it's like the, the whole case for Josh Allen this last year was basically like, you want to take him that early because if he goes off, if he has a season he's capable of, he could just like start lapping all the other quarterbacks. Now, that didn't necessarily happen. He was still obviously awesome. Uh, but we had Jalen Hurts really breaking out. Um, Holmes obviously played really well. Uh, Justin Fields started going nuclear at points. Didn't start off necessarily fantastic. Uh, but like, you know, he was dropping like 40 points a few times. Um, Joe Burrow, obviously, we've seen that ceiling. Um, but the case was, if Josh Allen's running for touchdowns, having a ton of rushing yards, throwing for a ton, you know, it could be a situation where you, like, need him to win. That's why he went earlier than anyone else. But if we kind of look at that, it's like, well, Jalen Hurts has that in his range of outcomes, and so does Josh Allen, and everyone knows Mahomes is an absolute monster, and if Fields has a season that he had midway through, and they start drafting, you know, um, just like 
more weapons. I mean, he had absolutely no one, uh, especially when Mooney got injured. Mooney's not, you know, number one. Like, he had no one. They're obviously going to draft people. Maybe that adds to his upside this season. But you start looking at that, and you're like, okay, all that's doing is saying, yes, they're all very good. But it's saying, like, the odds that any one of them is a true difference maker separating from the pack is now lower and yet it costs you a lot more draft capital to get them. So that's kind of my take. I don't think this is going to hold. I think that this trio of like Mahomes, Allen, Hurts is, is going to stay one, but it's going to stay one in like the third round. Like that's going to be tier one. And I think this like Lamar, Burrow, Fields, and Herbert range is going to drop into like the fourth and fifth round. And we're going to get much closer to what we saw last season. It'll still probably bump up uh, just given, you know, the upside they have. But another thing that did is it played into everyone else. And so these teams all drafted a quarterback, and I think maybe people got a little bit concerned. And so you see Trevor Lawrence go in the fifth round. You see Dak, Deshaun Watson go in the seventh round, uh, Tua go in the seventh round. Not necessarily bad picks in a vacuum, but it's forcing everyone to kind of take, like Daniel Jones, eighth round. These are not good, like, value picks in my mind. Like, maybe we see... Um, there's like trend continue, quarterbacks are going earlier, and you just have to because if you wait, um, there was a team, was it Hill? Yeah, um, took Jalen Hurts, but then had no one. I mean, Malik Willis, Jordan Love, like there were no options. Like Jimmy Garoppolo, Desmond Ritter are coming off the board. And in some way, like when we add in rookies, that's going to help with the depth and maybe that does change things. Um, but I was just waiting and waiting. I got Kirk Cousins in the mid eighth round. Uh, Stafford in the late 11th round and yeah like both of those honestly might be reaches maybe not the the Stafford one I mean at 128 that's you know it, it was right before Mac Jones Geno Smith Kenny Pickett Malik Willis like obviously I basically got like the last like quality starter there um, but I think that's my overall point is that these quarterbacks are going earlier because of how early these other quarterbacks are going. And I think once those early quarterbacks drop in ADP, we're going to see a drop. And then once the rookies are added in, added in we're going to see a drop in the ADP of quarterbacks here. So I don't think this trend will continue, uh, but obviously I don't, uh, I don't fully know that. Uh, the other thing I saw, hold on, I need to like shift everything right now. Okay. Another trend I saw. Uh, so we don't necessarily know where um, people are going to get drafted, right? Like for the running back specifically, we don't necessarily know. Uh, like I drafted Kareem Hunt. I don't know who he's going to play for next season. Like it says Cleveland right now, but like, let's be honest, I have no idea what team's going to sign him. So there's going to be movement at running back. And I think people aren't fully taking into account um, now sophomore running backs, the rookies last year, who don't have super high draft capital. So like Brees Hall is safe, obviously. Kenneth Walker is safe. But other running backs, you know, you look at, um, let's find a few on the board here. James Cook, um, Brian Robinson. Uh, we'll look at Damian Pierce, Tyler Algier. Um, those are probably the big ones. Pacheco. I feel like people are drafting them right now based off of, if their situation stayed the same. But for many of these running backs, a free agent is going to come in and kind of muddy the waters. Maybe they end up being one of the ones that draft uh, Robinson, one of the ones that draft Gibbs. And so it's like, because that's like, I don't think being fully factored in, they're going too early. And so I would, if you're drafting right now, kind of avoid these sophomore running backs. Again, the ones that don't have high draft capital. I'm fine if Brees Hall ends up being okay with the recovery, taking him in the late first, early second round. I'm fine with Kenneth Walker going this early if we think he's going to be the guy. But for a lot of these other ones, it's like, well, I don't know what they're going to do with Algier. I don't know if the Falcons are going to draft another running back, roll with that player. Like, I don't know if that's going to happen. And right now, uh, you know, going in the sixth round, that's probably really not taking that into account because if that happens, he's going to go closer to like the 10th or the 11th round. So that was one thing I, I kind of saw there. And then maybe it is right. I don't know. I haven't had a ton of time to break this down to the draft yesterday. It seems like uh, a few of these sophomore wide receivers are also being a little bit aggressively picked. Uh, we look at, you know, I guess a Moner St. Brown, not a sophomore. This would be his third year, but a Moner St. Brown going 
in the you know early second round is obviously pretty aggressive. Jalen Waddle going in the early second round, that seems aggressive. Uh, but but Garrett Wilson second round. Uh, we look at Chris Olave, um, Christian Watson even fifth round. Like you know who's his quarterback going to end up being? Like it just seemed like young wide receivers were really being pushed up in the draft. Um, obviously, we like young wide receivers, but they were going a little bit too early, in my opinion. Um, and yeah, just just kind of like um, youth, I would just say. that At the running back position, at the wide receiver position, people are kind of pushing back older players, maybe because there's more unknowns with older players. But like, I don't know. And maybe you guys feel differently. I think that's something I kind of want to ask and see everyone's take here. But like, I got Keenan Allen in the mid fifth round Aaron Jones in the mid sixth round Darren Waller in the mid seventh round I don't know it seemed like anyone who wasn't young was being negatively impacted because they're not young and I don't know if that's necessarily what we should be doing so one shout out there and then the final one before we look at my team um which is correlation um Wanted to shout out that it's not overly important in this draft. This draft acted a lot more like a regular draft would. Um, as far as like if you were to compare like a best ball tournament for underdog, then it's like in the middle, it's this draft. And then over here is like season long fantasy. There might not be as much correlation, especially on my team. There's almost no correlation because this is just a solo draft. This isn't for a tournament. My team could never win the mitten. It could never win Best Ball Mania before next season because nothing's correlated. But I didn't draft this for Best Ball Mania. I drafted this for this these 12 teams. So I don't care if we spike in week three versus week 16, 17. I don't care if we even spike. I just want consistent production because there's no playoff. It's just total points over the whole season. So that was something I just wanted to shout out there. Uh, don't really worry very much about correlation. We don't need it as much for this. So what's my team? Um, I started off with Kelsey in like the well eighth pick. So that's like the middle-ish later uh, first round. I thought that was like a pretty solid pick because uh, I didn't really know what the tight end position was going to look like. I ended up again getting Waller in the seventh round. I think I really liked that like duo of tight ends that could both be really good, but I'm not paying for it. So like, I, you know, this is like a, if you went Kelsey Andrews last season, obviously did not work out. But the thought process is if you draft, you know, the tight ends one and two, well, you're dominating because you're just taking the highest score between two really good tight ends. Um, in a season long league, I wouldn't have taken Waller. I would have probably just taken another wide receiver at that spot, maybe gone with quarterback instead. Um, that was the thought process there. It was like, I just didn't know what tight end was going to look like. And I looked at the other picks. Like, obviously, I would have taken all of, like, Jefferson, Chase, uh, McCaffrey, Cooper Cup, Eckler. Um, I think that's basically going to be the top five this season. We pretty much already know that. It is February 3rd when I'm recording this, be 4th when I upload this. Like, even this early, we kind of know that's what the top five is going to look like. And I thought everyone after that, like there was a case for so many different players. And I was pretty sure I was going to get someone good. And I was pretty sure I was going to get a good running back in the second round that I was like, why don't I just grab Kelsey? True difference maker. Um, I don't think we saw any sort of decline in production, you know, last season into this season. We're not really expecting it into next year. Even if he does, he could decline a lot and still be the tight end one. Very safe pick. Thought I'd go with that. Um, after that, I go with Saquon, which I think was another pretty good value at 17th overall mid-second round. Um, could argue for Derrick Henry in that spot. I just thought like we know um, basically what the Giants are going to be. We know they're going to be a relatively decent offense next season. We know that Saquon's still going to be the guy. We know he's still relatively young. Obviously, he's not, you know, in like his first three years, but, you know, he's not like an old player at this point. Um, we saw a decline later in the season uh, this year, but still obviously, like if you watch the playoff games, he was still like a, you got a call from Manchester. Um, he was still like explosive in the playoff games. Like he was, he was still there. Um, I don't think we should expect really any drop off there. And so I thought Saquon with that pick. And then I was like, you know what? I took tight end. I took running back. 
why don't we go to wide receiver at this point? Um, you guys know a build I like is avoiding wide receiver for a little bit and then kind of hammering them out in the middle rounds. Um, but I didn't really see anything. Like I looked, this is the um, like the middle to mid late um, third round now. Took Debo. I probably would have considered one of Jacobs or Chubb. Obviously, we don't know where Jacobs is going to play next season. Uh, even if he plays the Raiders, we don't know who the Raiders quarterback is going to be. And so a little bit of unknowns there. But obviously, like he looked fantastic this year. He's going to be good again next year. Um, I probably would have taken Chubb. Um, Stevenson felt uh, aggressive in the third round. So I don't think I would have done that. Um, but Debo, like we just... We know he's going to be involved in the offense. He's going to get schemed looks. He's a very good player. He's someone that's like a core piece of that offense. That's just something I look to this early in the off season, you know, looking for players that we just know are going to be good. Um, so I thought that was a decent pick. Could have gone with Mixon as long as this court case kind of goes away. I don't really know what's going to come of that. Uh, but I don't know. I looked at my other options and I was like, I don't love taking a running back. Just felt like a reach. Like Mixon, ETN, Pollard. Dalvin Cook, Najee, everyone felt like a reach. And so I just like, just go with my best wide receiver and take that. Going to the next round. This is what I want your take on. I don't know where Kelvin Rimmel is going to go this season. I, I genuinely have no idea where he's going to go. Um, I thought that maybe I could get some sort of like Jaguar stack. That was like in my mind. I was like, okay, why don't I take Calvin Ridley? Hope that I can get Trevor Lawrence later. I didn't think Trevor Lawrence would go in the middle. I guess that's even like mid to early fifth round i didn't think that was going to happen i honestly thought i could get trevor lawrence closer to where i got Kirk cousins maybe that's on me for, for not knowing how much his stock has risen um but i thought i was going to jaguar stack that's why i kind of took Calvin Ridley. and also obviously he's a very good player and if this is an ascending offense an offense we're very confident is going to be good next season is going to throw the ball plenty i mean it's just a really good situation there's obvious risk in having a player who was just suspended for an entire season that we haven't seen play at a high level in a very long time um i would just say in the fourth round risk starts to go away we all know the drop off is sixth round starts in the fifth round and so we're still looking at like you know very high caliber players still available in the fourth round um it was basically between him and marty cooper i really didn't know who i wanted to take um, I was thinking maybe if we, we thought like Watson performs better next season, Cooper clear number one. Um, but I don't know. I just thought the upside of Calvin Ridley was a little more enticing. But let me know. Uh, where do you guys think Calvin Ridley's going to go next season? Then we work into the fifth round. And the fifth round, kind of what I highlighted before, is that last round of players where it's like these are all very good players in very good situations who have all produced in the past. I guess you could say besides maybe like Judy and Watson, the produce in the past thing. And I guess Drake London. Um, and everyone else has like shown us to be like very, you know, high upside fantasy players. Um, I just thought, you know, attach yourself to the Chargers offense. Uh, get someone who, you know, is obviously getting up there in age, but is still a, a very, very talented player. Going to be good while healthy. Uh, we saw just the targets were through the roof this season. If he's going to continue that as my wide receiver three, I'm more than happy with that pick. Uh, and then Aaron Jones. I don't really know what to make of Aaron Jones. Like if Rodgers returns, obviously that'll end up being a smash in the sixth round. Um, do they sign a quarterback? Do they go with love? Do they draft a quarterback? I have no idea what's going to happen with that situation. Uh, but I just thought if we're betting on talent and I was looking at all the other running backs going in this range, there are plenty of unknowns with every single other running back. Why not take one where we know he's extremely talented. We know that he's just going to have a role in the offense, um, going to have a pass catching role in particular, uh, taking him to back up Aaron Jones or taking him back up Saquon as Aaron Jones, uh, just felt like a smart pick there. Then we get into the range where obviously you're not going to like it as much. We enter the seventh round, just talent is starting to drop off. Um, again, in a season long league, I wouldn't have taken Darren Waller here. I just thought, why not make a unique build? Um, and especially if this were a tournament, which I believe a tournament is coming. There's no tournament out right now for like 2023 best ball. I think one's coming. I would especially do something like this because like, who knows? Like what if Darren Waller into the off season, like there's a lot of hype around him. Um, he like starts going off in camp. There's a bunch of clips around him. Like you can't tell me he's not a player that would skyrocket into like the fourth or fifth round. Like that could absolutely happen. And so 
if we're drafting this early, why not take someone who has that possibility, make a build that potentially no one will be able to get come July and August. Like there's a possibility that no one can get a Kelsey and Waller combo in July and August. And so if this were a tournament, you definitely want to do that. I just thought it was a unique build. And I looked around at my other options. It was like, I could take Cortland Sutton. Um, I thought about Cam Akers, but I was like, I don't know what that running back situation is going to look like. Um, I was like, I could take a quarterback, but I looked at the options and I was really thinking Dak or Watson would be like the two I was looking at. Both of them end up coming off the boards. So we're looking at at Tua maybe, at Kyler, but I don't know if Kyler is going to play to start the year. Probably not. And so there were just so many unknowns that I was like, listen, let's just take Darren Waller. I'm pretty sure I can get Kirk Cousins in the next round. Um, I was thinking maybe going Darren Waller, Kirk Cousins, then Daniel Jones to kind of pair with um, Saquon, but then Daniel Jones ends up going. So, I mean, I stand behind the pick, uh, but I understand like not wanting Darren Waller after this last year. Best thought process behind going him and then going Kirk Cousins. Uh, Zay Jones after that in the ninth round was a panic pick. Um, I noticed a little bit too late. I was talking to someone on Discord. There was like 10 seconds left. That's when I made that pick. Um, he was towards the top of my board when I was kind of moving things around earlier because I thought that I was going to do that stack of Calvin Ridley, Trevor Lawrence, Zay Jones. That doesn't end up happening. Um, I guess you could just argue that it's attaching yourself to an offense. Like me just saying, I think the Jaguars will be good. I think three wide receiver sets are obviously going to be um, Ridley, Kirk, and Zay Jones. Like Marvin Jones is, is just not going to be a thing next year. Uh, Zay Jones had a really good season. If the offense ends up taking a step forward, being really good, he'll definitely benefit from that. He'll definitely benefit from, you know, Calvin Ridley joining the field. Um, Zay being like the clear number three, someone that defenses are not going to be able to game plan for. And so that's just like the general thought process there. After that, um, we kind of like bring up the rest of the team. We have the, the Kareem Hunt pick. I was basically just thinking, okay, I have Saquon. I have Aaron Jones. Obviously, I feel good about those two, but have one quarterback i've got two tight ends i don't need another tight end i felt good about my wide receivers at that point i was like i kind of need a running back and then i looked at the board and i was like wow this is disgusting and this is a spot where you know having uh some of these rookies will benefit us like maybe we'll, there'll be a rookie i can take a shot on at that point but also some rookies will have already been drafted which will kind of push back uh the running backs that were available to me i was thinking zeke would be a good pick here mid 10th round um obviously there's like plenty of unknowns there but there's plenty of unknowns with everyone but then i was like uh, zeke obviously got taken as you can see on the board uh then i was like okay i want elijah Moore. i was like i don't know i just noticed him after the other one looking back i would have taken elijah Moore instead of zay jones had i had more time i noticed that then of course uh elijah Moore gets taken the pick before me and so i'm like ah i can't go with him i looked at the wide receivers and i was like i could go with osborne i thought osborne would be there at my next pick of course he goes two picks before me there um i thought about michael thomas but i wasn't in love with it um i thought about mooney but then i was like what if they draft like multiple wide receivers certainly a possibility so there were just like problems with everyone that i was like you know what cream hunts produced in the past he's a good pass catching back could he sign somewhere in free agency that's a good situation where he's going to you know split time with a starter um, but have a little bit more opportunity than he did on the browns and maybe on a consistent offense i thought that was a possibility and in the 10th round why not so that's kind of why i went with him and then stafford I just felt like a run was going to happen again, and I looked at quarterback. This is Stafford in the 11th round. I was like, okay, quarterbacks on the board at that point are Mac Jones, Geno Smith, Derek Carr, um, Kenny Pickett, Malik Willis, Jordan Love, Purdy, Tannehill, Garoppolo, Brady, who's retired now and was retired when this was recorded, but, you know, take a shot there. I don't mind that. Desmond Ritter, like, it's gross, right? No one that has much upside. I figured Stafford was kind of the last of the group that had upside. I was basically between him and like Gino. Um, but I saw Owen Robinson super late and I was like, well, I need some sort of a stack. Um, and I knew if I didn't get Robinson, I could probably get, um, oh, what's the, what's the Van Jefferson. I was like Van Jefferson. Maybe I could pick up, um, Two two at well, I really didn't want to do that because I was like, I think they bring in another wide receiver, and at least there's a potential that Allen Robinson's like the number three and can do something with that. Um, but that was just the thought process there. Was I was like, it, it's over, like it's over if I don't get Stafford or Geno here. So I got to take one of them. I took Stafford. Um, obviously, I, I think he's gonna be totally fine, well healthy. Um, 
but yeah, that ends quarterback. And I was basically at this point, I was like, okay, I've got two quarterbacks I feel solid about. I've got two tight ends I feel good about. Let's just kind of alternate through uh, running backs, wide receivers. Let's lean youth. That's always the lean late, but also just lean towards like, who's someone that could make a difference, right? I thought Alec Pierce was like an okay pick because um, he's got downfield upside. Um, obviously coming into his second season, he was someone they feel really good about. Clear number two on the Colts. I don't think the Colts are going to bring someone else in to be the number two. I think they like having Pierce and Pittman. Uh, and so I felt relatively confident there. Penny after that was just me saying, the, this is a disgusting range for running back. I probably at this point would be leaning towards a rookie. They're not on the board. And so I was like, who's someone who has some level of upside who isn't the starter? Obviously, there are no starters left at this point. Um, looking back, I think maybe Damian Harris is the pick. If he goes somewhere in free agency, that he can be sort of the one or at least the one B on like a good team. But I just thought Penny, like obviously when healthy, we've seen him be an absolute monster at this point. That's what I'm looking for is someone who could do something. Uh, so that's why I kind of went Penny there. But I could argue um, Damian Harris in that spot was another good pick. I thought Jalen Warren was an option. If he made it back to me, he gets taken in the 14th round. Um, I thought Chuba Hubbard was an option. He gets taken. I honestly thought P. Ryan was an option, but I just, I don't see a scenario where he's ever like, you know, a true fantasy starter. So the remainder of my picks. Curtis Samuel, a player whose talent we just like. Obviously, uh, McLaurin ahead of him, Dotson ahead of him, but, you know, still a very good player. I thought 14th round, fine for him. Allen Robinson talked about before, completed the stack. And then I went with just, again, two upside running backs. These would probably be rookie picks, but Jeff Wilson knows the system in Miami. If they choose to keep him and not draft a rookie, which... I don't know what's going to happen, but if that happens, obviously that's a good spot for him. Pierre Strong completely depends on how his offseason go, but if we're kind of thinking Damian Harris leaves the team in free agency, signs somewhere else, Pierce, um, Pierce, yeah, um, Pierre Strong looked really good in his very, very limited action when they drafted him. People thought he could be the next James White potentially. I don't know if that's necessarily going to happen, but he could be someone that, you know, gains trust, or at least Bill gains trust in, that Stevenson's still the clear one, but Strong has a few games where he had, you know, racks up some receptions. He's an explosive player, so maybe he busts off some long runs. They use him as like a, a change of pace back, giving him like, you know, seven to eight touches a game in the, you know, 17th round with no rookies. I felt that was pretty good upside. And then obviously the upside that we saw uh, if if uh, Stevenson ever like missed some time. And then Terrace Marshall, pure upside pick. Uh, I was basically between him and David Bell, and then David Bell goes to pick one before me, uh, just young player uh, on an offense that, you know, doesn't have that much talent. If they don't draft a wide receiver early, he's obviously a good pick there. Uh, but obviously, you know, at this point of the season, he's at risk of that. So that's my team. Let me know the, uh, what you think of the team in the comment section below. Uh, and let me know, especially of like Calvin Ridley, Keenan Allen, Aaron Jones. That was a range where I felt like all of them were like really, really solid values, but I wasn't a hundred percent confident if maybe like I'm on an Island, I'm thinking about players who, you know, are either aging or in situations that are a little bit, you know, uneasy with like Ridley, not playing in a while, Aaron Jones, not knowing who his quarterback is going to be. Uh, let me know what you think on those picks. And then also Darren Waddle, honestly, like this whole four through seven range, I want everyone's thoughts on. Because uh, I thought it was like unique, just players that we don't usually see going that late. Uh, but is that just going to be a thing this season? But anyways, uh, overall thoughts, let me know what you think. Strategy, picks. Uh, that's the end of this one. Hope you all did enjoy. If you did, have a hit the like button. Have a subscribe to the channel if you're new here. Thanks for watching.